truer words have never been spoken. Anyway, thank you for tuning into Scandal in Your Life. My name is Scandal, and since you just let me into your life, I'm going to let you into a little bit of mine. Today we're going to talk about the New York State prison system and the parole board, and my interaction with the parole board. All right, so for those that don't know what parole is, parole is an extension of your jail time. So say, in my case, it was short time, one and a half to four and a half years. I'm doing that one and a half, no matter what. And the maximum amount of the maximum amount of time that they can keep me is four and a half years. Then you get a CR date, a conditional release date. So say I don't get out in that one and a half, I don't do anything crazy to get the max, I've probably been out in three and change. In the early 90s, most people that I know that saw the parole board, they got hit at least one time. The maximum amount of time that they could hit you at that particular time was two years each time they, they want to hit you at the board. So if you had, say, a, say a two to ten, you see the board in two years, they can hit you with another two. You see it in another two years, they can hit you with another two. And that, they can keep hitting you up until that ten-year time mark. Um, once you have your your max date though, you're done. You're going out. Once you know for a fact, like they're not letting me out, and I have my max date, you you have a set date regardless. You're going to be out, so that's not really a crazy thing. You know, eventually you're going to go out if you have a a bit like that. If you have something in life, they can keep you there. You can have a one to life, and they can keep hitting you at the board until you die in jail. So you know, anything with a life on the end of it is is is, is kind of sketchy. So, like I said, majority of the people that I know that were um, up north. They didn't make their first board, and I think I found out why. Well, it worked for me, so I'll tell you what I did that uh, helped me. So I'm there, I'm talking to these people in jail, and um, most of them are depressed. They, 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 everyone has an excuse why they're in jail. So when they go to the parole board, they come up with all these different excuses of why they're in jail. I was high, I was drunk, I was this, I was that. And when you do that, you have to take programs. If you have, if you're arrested and you say that you are on the under the influence of drugs or alcohol, then you need to be in a drug or alcohol program. If you do anything with guns or anything like that, you need to be in a violence program. Me, I grew up in Brooklyn, so Brooklyn was pretty much in the 90s. Drug dealers, scammers, which consists of boosters and credit card, you know, stuff, and um, stick-up kids. I didn't have the patience to sell drugs. I wasn't trying to be a scammer, so, you know, jack boy it was, stick-up kid. And um, so... I had to take a violence program. I knew I had to take a violence program. You got to kill time. You got to do whatever you can to get yourself out of there. And um, I started meeting people in there that, you know, seemed cool. And when you're in jail and you're talking to people, but, you know, I'm a cool dude. I'm not affiliated with nobody. But I'm just a cool dude. So I, I get along with most people. And, and I'm not a soft dude. So, you know, I'm not a victim. So people, I had a good rapport with a good amount of people. And um, they started telling me because they out there extorting people. They doing this, you know. This is Brooklyn. We 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 have no Brooklyn is always like this. No matter what part of Brooklyn you're from, if you're from Brooklyn, you up north, you unless you have some real beef, you kind of just merge together. So I'm running with my Brooklyn people, and they extorting people. They doing all kind of wild shit. And um, the dude actually told me, supposed to be one of my people. He's like, yo, so enough for nothing. I hope they hit you at the board, meaning that they hope that they keep me at least two years. I'm like, son, why would you say that? Because you want some good guy shit and you're not trying to get no money with us. If they hit you at the board, maybe you get some money, you get down. So, from that point on, we are no longer cool. Like, you don't wish jail on nobody. Like, jail is a weird place. Like, I know a dude that, um, he had a two to four and he killed somebody over a chair in the day room and ended up with a 12 and a half to 25. You know, little things mean a lot when you're in jail, so... He killed him over a chair. It seemed stupid because he was sitting in the guy's chair. The guy said, get up. It was an empty room. But, you know, this this is his life. That's his story. It's not mine. I'm trying to go home. I'm not killing nobody over a chair, especially when it's not my chair. So then I had one of my other guys, you know, he, he was stressed out about the board. He got hit about two, three times at the board. And he got to the point where he was like, I already know they're going to keep me scandal. So when they see my paper, they're just going to be like, ah, 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 no. Just chuck it on the floor. <laughs> that was his story. And they kept hitting him. So me. I go to the parole board. I see these people. And the parole board is a group of people that are in front of you. They have your paperwork in front of them of your crime and any infraction you might have had in the jail system. Your, all your record is right there. Your whole thing is right there. And um, 
I'm talking to them and uh, they're like, okay, so uh, we see here, they're looking through paperwork, that you are under the influence of drugs or alcohol when you did your crime. And I'm like, no. Then, but we have it here on paper. So, you know, we have it here that you are under the influence of drugs or alcohol when you did your crime. Again, they said this. And I'm like, no, uh, I, I was not. I said, well, how about you show it to me and, and then we can, we can dispute this. But I wasn't under the influence of anything. So they shuffling with the papers. They're looking at each other. Shuffling with the papers. Like, all right, um, you know, we, we, we don't seem to find it. We can't find it. I said, I know. They said, okay, so uh, if you weren't under the influence of drugs and alcohol when you did your crime, why did you do your crime? I looked them square in the eye, and I said, because I thought I could get away with it. Now, it was at that moment that I thought I, I messed up. I was like, damn, I played myself. To myself, I was like, I, I played myself. All right, well, I already said it. I can't unsay it now. So they look at each other like, did he just, just, just motherfucker just say that he thought he could get away with it? They're like, so how do we know that you won't think you can get away with it again? I'm like, well, you know, I've learned. They're like, well, you know, how do we know that? I said, well, you can see my, my criminal record. I don't have any crazy infractions or anything. I'm not getting into any wild stuff, you know. My record pretty much speaks for itself. They look at each other. All right, uh, you know what? Thank you, and uh, we'll get back to you. So now... I left, and it usually takes a couple of days before you get the um, the envelope from them saying that you're going to go home or you're going to stay. It's one or the other. That's it. Or if they do hit you at the board, if they do decide to keep you, how much they can keep you up to two years at a time. So it, it could be one year. It could be whatever. So um, I sat there, and I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm Actually, I'm watching um, Rhapsody in the Basement. That's how far back it goes. I'm watching the videos, and I got the letter in the mail. Mail call came. I got my letter. You know, I just took it. I'm watching the videos. I remember the video I was watching some dude from the Bronx called Nine. And I'm watching this rap song. And I'm just listening. I'm, I'm like, all right. I'm about to open this letter. Now, people tell you different things. If the letter's too thick, then you have you you have, you have have appeal papers in it. And, and they're keeping you. But then if it's too thin, you know, it's, it's, everyone has something to say about something. I'm like, all right. So I open the letter and I have a release date. So now when you get your first board... If they let you out the first time, you have to wait about a month and a half, two months before you actually are released. After the second, third board, if they give you, if you, you get released, you're out like within that week. So I'm sitting there, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, yo, hold on. This is, I'm out. And what it was, I realized, had I fell into the trap of, yeah, yeah, I was under the influence of drugs and alcohol when I did my crime, you know, I'm sorry about that, then they would have sentenced me to stay longer to do a drug or alcohol program. That's the rules. I did an anti-violence program. I had the paperwork and they saw that. But that's everyone's excuse. So if you don't have that in your file, this is for everyone that's in jail and you're going to the board. If you don't have drugs or alcohol in your file, don't use that as an excuse when you see the parole board. Because all they're going to do is keep you in there to take a drug or alcohol program. Sometimes honesty works. And I, I thought I played myself. But it worked. And... Um, I got released. Off topic, being in jail is stressful. And no matter how cool you are, sometimes you don't realize that you're stressed. I'm sitting there, so this this is to my boy Boo, Boo Blaze, the barber. Look him up on Black Wallet Smatter. He's doing a lot for the community. Check him out. He's a good brother. Um, He was my barber. And um, once I made the board, I saw him a couple days later, and he was like, yo, son. He said, wow, son, like, yo, you, you was fronting this whole time. So I'm looking, what you talking about? He like your son, you you wow, like you you was fronting, like you you was you was bugging in here. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like what? what? Like your son, I'm your barber. I've been cutting your hair since you've been here. You've been having bald patches all in your hair, the alopecia, bald patches this whole time that you've been here. Once you made the board, your hair grew back. He said, bro, I know. I've been cutting your hair. He's like, yo, son, so you were stressed the whole time trying to act all nonchalant and cool like like everything was hunky-dory and you were stressed out. He's like, yo. And that that let me know that stress is a serious thing. Stress can be a killer. Stress affects your bodies in different ways. So do what you can to avoid stress. But uh, they let me go home, and uh, I haven't been back since because I realized when I was in there, I was too cool for that. And dudes would be like, what you mean by that? you not too cool for this, then there's something wrong for you. You can have it. You can have my share of it. Every guy wants to know, every guy wants to know 
how they would fare in jail. Every person that's never been in jail wants to know how they would, how they would survive. You know, it's a small part of them that wants to know that they would be okay. I, I did it. I've been there. I've done it. I'm okay. I'm gonna. I could survive it if God forbid if I had to go back. But I'm good. I don't need to go back. I'm a productive part of today's society. I pay taxes, all that other good stuff, and um, stay out of jail. But those of you that see the parole board, don't make stuff up to try to make yourself look more like a victim. Sometimes you got to stick to your guns. If it's not in your file that you were on drugs or alcohol, don't tell these people that you were trying to get sympathy because they will keep you there. They will make you do a program and you'll be there at least six months longer. So once again, my name is Scandal. This is Scandal in Your Life. Have a great day.